and we're back. This is game number two between LFY and eHome. This is the ESL1 Katowice qualifiers. My name is Skim. I'm joined by the cost. How's it going? Hello. It's been this? a it's been a long day though. Um, I'm not convinced by eHome's uh, team play. Might be just this one game. Um, they picked a, a lot of. Uh, team fight, uh, but they were caught solo so many times. Um, you didn't really see five versus five fight. Oh. They picked the lineup that sort of like required them actually to play more together, but they were picked off one by one here and there, and they... I don't know, they felt kind of lost, so I looked towards a more straightforward, maybe easier to execute lineup. Well, not, not that it was necessarily a difficult lineup to execute, but they were really reliant on the Chronosphere in a lot of cases. Or at the very least, to hit multiple abilities at the same time. You know, the Echo Slam AA Ultimate. AA Ultimate actually missed a lot of times, where yeah. I thought they sh it should have been very easy to connect. Um, we have a Tusk opening. Uh, pretty popular pick uh, these days. Especially in China. Yeah. Uh, after that, they first picked Clockwork and Queen of Pain. After that, uh, I guess Shadow Fin was uh, a deny pick. Uh, so, it was it was the Ehom. Ehom did pick uh, Clockwork first, and then they picked the uh, Tusk Shadow Fiend. Oh, to answer all right. So, so just so so they can't uh, uh, get the Clock and Shadow yeah. Fiend, so he gets the free souls. Ten uh, seconds remaining. They already know Shadow Fiend is gonna be mid, so they put Queen of Pain Five on a mid lane. Remaining. Before um, the buff the raises, uh, Queen of Pain could just dominate, stomp. Yeah. Stomp the Shadow Fin, but uh, these days uh, with the buff on the raises, plus the mid is mostly two versus two. Uh, it's pretty Dyer even matchup, though. Very much so. So this is definitely going to come down to the rotations from the clock and the tusk and their presence on the lane. Ehome, banwise taking out the disruptor, definitely a good pick against the Queen of Pain, but also against the Clockwork actually. Um. LFY taking out Life Solar and Lycan. I don't really Not think. Yeah, I, I don't think. I'm trying to understand why they banned out the, the Nikes. Well, they have a lot of. They have two Life Solar. Maybe they plan to go for a Bat Rider as an offlaner. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Because uh, he doesn't care about the Clockwork as well. About the Cogs, he can fly over them. That's true. Well, Ehome did pick the last ladder yesterday, right? When they had this Ten really aggressive draft remaining. with the Bunty Hunter Puck. Yeah. So maybe Five they just think it's one of Ehome's heroes, potentially. In Fast Bomb with Queen of Pain and Clockwork isn't too bad either, so... Yeah, ba Bounty is still in the pool if uh, Ehome wants to switch Clockwork to, off -lane? to an offlane and have a Bounty. And play a little bit more aggressive. Yeah. There's definitely a lot of kill potential. Clockwork, Bounty, Queen of Pain. Mid game could be very aggressive from their side, but of course, Ehome or LFY rather, they have the Tusk already as a defensive sort of pick against that. Well, they're taking a lot of time for this third pick. Dyer How do you feel about a Tight Hunter? You didn't mention it earlier? Well, there it is. I, I just need to watch one game to get into their minds. Yes. Yeah. Right. Well, so, um, Weaver is still in the pool for Ehome. Uh, if they want to go for it, uh, because of the Shikuchi move speed, uh, doesn't get slowed. Yeah, she doesn't remaining. get slowed. Uh, I, I call her she. It's actually a he. Uh, Weaver. For some I, reason, I, I don't know why. Weaver is she as well. Yeah. That yeah, I don't know. It's uh, someone checked for me a long time ago in a lore that uh, it's a he, but may maybe because of. I'm thinking that uh, she spawns uh, those spiderlings, those little bugs, so yeah. she, it must be her. Oh, it's a mother. Uh, yeah, it's a birth. mother, yeah. What oh. what else is there? Um, they, LFY didn't uh, show the second support yet, L nor the safe lane. Uh, okay, this, this is one of the heroes that also doesn't care too much about the Batrider. Also, also removes the sticking up palm charges and with the phantom rush follows him through the forest if he tries to fly over Ten the trees remaining. LFY like you said still haven't revealed the second Five support yet remaining. probably will pick it now so they can keep the carry pick 
as a sort of like reveal last pick, being able to counter a couple of things. What kind of support will work here? It's probably going to be a five position support because they have the tusk already. So maybe something along the lines of a dazzle. Venge to deny it. Have a defensive swap against the clockwork. Dire team pick. Yeah. Takiro. I didn't think about the Chakiro. Well, that's two flying heroes. A lot of fire. They only need Ogre and Lina. Oh. Yeah, pick both of them as last pick. <laughs> <laughs> Just a prize pick. Hey, we have two. He we have six heroes. Ten seconds remaining. Well, they're gonna have six heads. Well, that's true. Five seconds remaining. Well, Ehome. Still have to pick a hero. Probably going to be the, also a support. You don't really want to last pick a support here, I don't think. Then again, it doesn't really matter in a lot of ways since obviously LFY have the last pick anyway. So since you're picking the next two, I think you probably want to pick a carry then because... Or no, never mind. The supports are getting bad. Keep going, keep going. No, I think you want to pick the carry now mm. because they've already started banning a lot of carries and they're probably going to get banned even more carries. You know what's forgotten hero? Uh... Position five, Winter Wyvern. I'm not oh, sure why they're not picking it. Oracle. A support here, Oracle. Yeah. Um, so the counter to the Bad Rider here. Stops the lasso, removes uh, the magic damage output yeah. for Shadowfin and the uh, Bat Rider. So the question Ten for Ehome now is: remaining. Is this going to be a four-position Clockwork, or are they, I mean, are they still going to pick an off lane here? I love how LFY second time in a row abandoned Broodmother, just in case. So somehow Broodmother is a hero that uh, slips uh, slips through. Somehow. Every time. People, yeah. If I was drafting, I would have near my remaining. monitor just written down Broodmother. <laughs> and Huskar. Yeah. Broodmother, Huskar. I, I thought about Huskar since they picked Oracle, but uh, I don't think that's doable. Offlane Queen of Pain, dude. Sure. Can work. Roaming Queen of Pain. I mean, can't be worse uh, than the Queen uh, of Pain let, we've let, seen let's today. Let's just stop there. Can't be worse than the Queen of Pain we've seen today. <laughs> just it was yesterday, wasn't it? Was it yesterday? I don't know. I don't I'm know pretty sure it was today. Is. I don't know. I've lost all concept of time. We saw Queen of Pain with no Shadow Strike against the Shadow Fin. Yeah, that's Wh the Queen of Pain which, I'm talking about. Yeah, though. which backfired, then oh. the Shadow Fin was like s level 7 or 8. Queen of Pain was level 4. Actually, that might have been yesterday. I'm not too sure. Can't be bothered right now. Ehome, still have to pick probably the offlaner. But again, like we illustrated, Ten technically they are very remaining. open with the draft, and you know, like we mentioned earlier, there is that they Wake's influence. They could go for Five a tight hunter if they remaining. want to. Wouldn't be bad. Definitely adds more team fight control, which they couldn't currently don't really have. They don't really have any team fight control outside of like cogs and, well, obviously the spells from Queen of Pain, but that's not really control. That's just damage. I don't know. I, I would love to see a Huskar here. Same. I, uh, I would enjoy that. LFY's turn to pick. <laughs> it's pop boring. It's just an offline clockwork now. Not impressed. So what does... Uh, I, feel like, I feel like we got our hopes up with that Huskar. And then... They already know what they're picking. Anti-mage. Choose your hero. Um... It's not a great anti-mage game, I don't think. I mean, it's not bad either. I, I, I they don't have lockdown for anti-mage. They have uh, Earth Spirit. Earth Spirit Clockwork. Clockwork's not that great against anti-mage. You hookshot and you cog him out, and then you drop the silence and then you stun him. Nice. That's like that's gonna happen. Now th this feels like a decent anti-mage game, not the best one. Uh, yeah. they, they needed something uh, that builds into Battle Fury or some kind of AoE clear uh, against Phantom Lands or Illusion. No, I agree. I think it's a decent anti-mage game. Before, if you pick Shadowfiend and anti-mage, uh, you would most likely lose the game. Uh, especially if you lose early game. Right right now, it could be the same uh, same uh, outcome if uh, Shadowfiend gets shut down. But th they need to pressure anti-mage as well. Yeah. 
Let's see if they can do that, actually. Like, you have two heroes who depend uh, on a farm a lot. Uh, and uh, they have a Clockwork as Prepare an offlane. Uh, which means he's going to get uh, a lot of early levels, so he can be more active, which will help Shadowfind and... Uh, no, he's not going to... Never mind. I'm, I'm talking nonsense. It's Batrider as well. He can pressure the lane a little bit. Uh, I hope he's going to go for a pull. Uh, not sure if Oracle can stop him there. They keep typing GH, by the way. So I'm pretty sure that's like some Chinese meaning. I know in CS it's like good half, but obviously there's no halves. HYM rolls in very aggressively. I don't know even why he did that. So he's just going to get caught out with the shards on top. And it's an easy kill for him. Or for SF. Yeah, they just won't give it to SF. And oh, 12, 12 souls. souls! That's even better when, when you're playing with a clockwork yeah. in your team. Well, that's just uh, <laughs> and CTY with the chat wheel. Just like, nice. 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 Ah! Well, he is used to using a chat wheel since he was Fight a stand for a team secret. Yeah. Well. Looks like that's going to be two runes on each side, or can Anti-Mage snag this rune from Faith Beyond? The battle begins. Cogs. Cogs? No? Doesn't he want to use it? He nah, does not want to commit. Monet the does get the rune. So, this is three runes for the Radiant. Pretty big victory here. Old Chicken getting chased. Does have Doppelganger. I mean, he, it's a cooldown, but he has it skilled, of course. Now the pull is happening with two heroes, in fact. HYM, revealed that he has a roll, rolls in, blocks Batrider a little bit here. Now, Oracle comes in as well, but they're not going to get anybody here, really. Forces out the TP from the Jakiro. That's about it. Yeah, Batrider trying to pull the wave. Uh, not super effective, but uh, he disrupted the creep equilibrium on top. Well, mid lane, we have that dual mid, of course. I'm surprised that Ehome didn't really try and commit some here or here, but I guess since SF already had that start with those results, maybe not even that worth it. CTY getting blocked in. And now he's getting, well, he's kind of pushed back from the toss, really. Top lane, have to be careful, Bad Rider being dove, and he does fall, so that's, that's an easy kill for them, really. Yeah, where is nice from uh, CTY now? Yeah, where is it now, CTY? Where is it? Faith beyond bottom lane? Nah, uh, now with the Jakir here, it's not going to be that easy. Certainly not when Jakir hits level 2, Liquid Fire is a bitch to deal with. Oh. They need to burn Clockwork's mana, but uh, also Clockwork burned a lot of anti-mage's mana, so he's going to be... Uh, all right, he knows he can't kill anyone, especially because Jakiro has a uh, SF, oh, high nice HP. play here with the fortunes and onto HYM. It's not going to be enough, though. HYM is still going to fall. They do get the SF call, though, so that's a good trade still. Afu, got to be careful now. Is there a blink available? Well, doesn't really want to commit to it. Doesn't have a scream anyway, so. Oh, SF is back in the fray. Lost, of course, half his souls. But that was a cute play, using the fortunes end onto the... Onto the Earth Spirit and then rolling in. So making sure it definitely does connect from long range. Great initiation, really. Yeah. Uh, Clockwork, uh, I was talking about the build on him. He knows he can't kill anyone. So with the rocket, he can just get some last hits, maybe yeah. even uh, help the mid lane. Uh, he's going to go for Soul Ring, which will give him enough sustain in the lane and uh, can use it uh, to get some mana because anti is going to burn his mana to zero. Do you think you should max it? Max Ma rocket? Um, uh, no. I I think you need to have, especially uh, as, as an, an off lane. Yeah, yeah, you need to have that battery assault max so you can uh, get some kills. He has a lot of CS though. <laughs> he has eight denies. Uh, that's cogs. Oh right. I keep forgetting. Calm those. down, Satan. Yeah. I keep forgetting about that. Oh, mid lane, a very one-sided at the moment, but of course, I mean. This Queen of Pain is getting dual lane, so to be expected. Supports at e home side kind of not really doing anything for the past minute now. Uh, they've just been sitting in the river, really, trying to look for something. But this Earth Spirit is still level 1. That's uh, not great. You definitely want at least level 3 at yeah, this Yeah, I mean, he's, in, he's involved in two kills. He should be uh, level 2. 
It's oh. because he didn't uh, leech any XP from the lane. On top lane, Bad Runner being caught out by Fortune's End, and with a roll on top should be enough. And indeed, still not level two though. Still not level two. On the Earth Spirit mid lane, CTY blinks out of the tree line SF. With the first race, Snowball comes in. CTY in big trouble now. The second race ensures the kill. Earth Spirit misses the stun, I believe, and well, even if he did hit it, not really gonna do too much. So. See uh, Super and Alpha, we can just get away there for free. They're playing so aggressive. Four minutes in between Tier 1 and Tier 2 Tower with a Shadow Fin, and they dealt uh, 700 damage well, to a mid tower. Nobody can afford, or they, I mean, Ehom can't really afford to punish it anyway, right? Right now, again, especially since the Earth Spirit is so low on uh, levels, he can't really punish that aggression. Now, look at the build on Shadow Fin. If someone did this. Uh, like a half a year ago, you would get instantly reported. Yeah. Like have a bracer and a raid band with no boots, magic wand. So. I mean, this probably means he's gonna go for drums, right? Yeah. Oh. Road of Ata's shadow thing. <laughs> Road of Ata's <laughs> shadow thing. That would be hilarious. <laughs> Gotta innovate, man. Uh, drums, drums is really fine on shadow thing. It gives oh. you the extra movement speed, some tankiness, mana pool. Which uh, gives you the snowball effect. Plus, he has a snowball from a tusk as well, so it's a double <laughs> snowball. I can't believe we keep making this joke for like two days straight now. Is under it's for those who who are not watching us constantly. Oh. Need to be kept in the loop effectively. Earth Spirit, level two, five minutes into the game. Part of three kills. It feels so bad, honestly. And he's sitting behind this mid lane. It doesn't feel really that intimidating. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And they even rotated the clockwork. They want to get uh, this Queen of Pain back into the game. Shadowfin mm. uh, is just taking control. HYM does well to roll out of there. Clockwork, still not level 6 yet. Also, this build from the Shadowfin actually makes it easier to survive any gank attempts, no. of course. you know. Um, so Clockwork, if he does rotate, oh, speaking of the Clockwork, getting caught out in the shards, and he should fall here. Body block, they really want to give their kill to the Antimation. Yep, that's an easy kill for him. <laughs> Mid lane, they're gonna go for the SF, but of course we did highlight that item build. Super tanky, has 10 stick charges as well, so he's not gonna die anytime soon. He has uh, 900 HP with uh, magic wand charges. That's like having a 1.1k HP. Oh, pretty much. They're gonna go shrine up. Oh, this is the worst camp you can get when you're playing Shadowfin. Golems. Who is there any hero that likes Golem aside from maybe like Alchemist? I don't know. Axe is fine. Uh, I guess. Bad Rider being caught out by Fortune's End. Well, unfortunately, they can't really chase him there. So he's going to be fine for now. Yeah, this landing stage so, so far definitely in favor of LFY, and you can see it in the net worth graph as well. They're ahead almost 2k, despite not taking a single tower, and only being ahead a single kill. But they're just out-farming the opponents so heavily. Yeah, a, a lot of uh, net worth is uh, in Bat Rider 30 CS, and uh, stack some forest for him as well. Oh, mid lane, I just missed a roll. Oh, no, they couldn't. Top lane, they want to kill the bad right now. Oh, he actually used the lasso aggressively, but he's still going to die here. Yep. Radiance top tower. That, that, that was flames. something. First bird still level two. Feels so bad. He just needs to leech XP somewhere. Yeah, they're going to smoke up, uh, get to the shrine, and try and try to make a go on a mid lane. Might even rotate Phantom Lancer with them. I feel like without the Phantom Lancer, they don't have enough damage. So yeah, they're drawing the lines. They really want to backstab the lower uh, the T1 tower, but I feel like that smoke was popped through early then. If they really want to take that long road, yeah, they're very, very, very indecisive where to go or how to take that gank. And yeah, the smoke is gonna pop here. They're still gonna go for the SF. The defensive snowball, though, but nice kick back onto the SF. So they're gonna sacrifice the Earth Spirit, but as long as they get the kill, it's worth it. And they do get that kill, so nice play here from HYM. Yeah, rolling sa in and kicking away sadly answer. for Earth Spirit, he died before they killed <laughs> the Shadow Fin, so he's yeah. level 2 still. Yeah, mid lane, Bad Rider tries to go for the kill here onto the, onto the Oracle. Does secure it, but also costs his own life. 
Oh, both the Phantom Lantern and Pain very low. Two Napalm uh, charges still, so they're very uh, slow as well. Can we Has a snowball. And uses it. Could be a second kill for the SF. Or just a kill for the SF. Actually, he didn't get the kill. It was off with double kill, so... They just stuck around for too long, man. They should have just let Bad Rider kill the Oracle and just get away with it. But, nope. Radiance top tower In the end, their attack. SF dying wasn't that big of a deal because he just comes back, kills a, kills a, kills a hero, suddenly up to 70, uh, 27 souls again. Yeah, Clockwork needs to rotate, <coughs> there, right? rotate now. He's level 6, level 7, actually. But uh, the thing about uh, offlane Clockwork, when he's missing, you know he's going to gank. That's true. Also, unfortunately, he didn't have any mana because obviously of the harassment from the anti mage. So it was really difficult, or it would have been really difficult for him to rotate there. It's a bit unfortunate. But he definitely needs to rotate. Maybe put the Earth Spirit bottom to the Leech XP. But I hate it's level 3. Nine minutes into the game. Hooray. Yeah, he needs to buy, buy the tome for himself. Yeah. Tusk is already level 6. He's just been sitting mid the entire time. And he's just level 6. And it's not really been hurting the SF either. He's only level behind the Queen of Pain. And I, f I feel like that's a worthy trade. Yeah, you're behind the Queen of Pain by a level, but your support is like level 6, right? It's a good trade. Cocker bottom. Cogs in the anti mage. I don't think this is the kind of cog that you would go for. Burns the mana. Purifying for. Uh, not purifying for. Fortune's end. Hookshot with the Soul Ring is available, but they don't want to go for a blind one. And the Creep Wave, creep wave is also blocking him. Creep Wave. Creep Wave. Uh, Anti-Mage is super defensive build. Magic Wand, Power Threads, Ring of Aquila. Like, uh, Battle Fury timing is not going to be uh, what usually is, but uh, it gives him enough lane survivability. Doesn't have to go region at all. Afu dies here. It's a killing streak actually given away to Old Chicken. It's not bad for him. And I believe HYM was actually out of range maybe for that experience. But it doesn't feel like he got experience with that kill. Yeah, this feels like one super sad Earth Spirit game. All right, when do you think he's going to hit level 6? 14, 15? I'm going to say 18. They should move with a clockwork and... Uh, Try to make something happen. Well, it looks like they're just content with having him sit in the bottom lane with that soul ring. I don't agree with that though. I feel like he's not really accomplishing anything on the map right now. And his team def definitely needs him. They could. I think they could set up a kill on BSF with him. That said, he does have raindrops now. Is that the full drums? He's so tanky with this build. Bottom lane, Chikiro. The liquid fire. Just chipping away at the tower. Phantom Lancer is getting close oh, to, lane, the blink to, onto the the Earth Spirit. The poor Earth Spirit just wants his level 4. Doesn't get it. Oh god. Right. So close, yet so far. At least he re revives fast, so... He That's can actually a really good point. He can TP and get Diamond the XP. And feed even more. I say that, but... I mean, he's been also involved Got in it. 6 out of 8 kills. Like, HYM has definitely been doing a lot on this map. It's just unfortunate that he doesn't get the experience. The whole bunch Radiance bunch. middle tower is under attack. Clock. Dyer's bottom tower yeah, he he moved attack. away, but he tried he tried to, to find the SF, but couldn't really find him. Now he's getting caught out. Lost a lot of mana already. Anti mage doesn't need the ultimate really to kill him. Does find the kill as well. You know, pain flicks in. Nice oh, the snowball. snowball. He dodges the ultimate. He's still gonna fall, but he definitely was styling. SF with the high ground ultimate onto four. That's a huge one. Lasso onto the Queen of Pain. The Cancelled drums. by the Oracle. Spirit, Earth Spirit comes in just to die. Old Chicken here also going to fall. F three heroes dead. That was a huge play here from LFY. Only the toss to fall after styling so much onto Ehome in the first place. And then Super with a great Requiem. Wow, that, that's noble, man. That's, that's something. Uh, well, Ehome's lineup... Uh, when you're playing against Anti-Mage, uh, you're always in a hurry. You want to shut him down, but uh, they failed to do so two times. Now, now they're in a really bad position. Well, 
What's their ticket out of this? Just more smoke ganks maybe together? Because this kind of started with just Faith Beyond just being by himself, right? Just dying then. So maybe they just need to smoke together with the Queen of Pain, with the Earth Spirit potentially. Earth Spirit, by the way, still only level 4. I'm going to keep track of this for the entire Dyer's time. Top tower is until under he hits level 6. Smoke, smoke gang top from LFY. They're not going to find anyone though. Question is... Does Ehome smell this? Bottom lane. HYM is in position, but I don't really think they have enough damage to kill. Antimage was just between Dyer's the two of them. Top tower is under attack. Oh, yeah. wow. He might just walk uphill here. Nope, he doesn't. Antimage is too tanky to kill. They need to rotate either Queen of Pain or Phantom Lancer once he gets the Defusal Blade. It looks like Queen of Pain is going to rotate bottom. Dyer's nope, just going to go is under attack. Feels very weak from Ehome at the moment. They just let a tower go and they don't really trade for it at all. Oh, that's an aggressive oh, blink from the Anti Mage. Blink and it's aggressive from Ehome. They cancel the TP and they with a stun they prevent the blink. And that's an easy kill for them. He just gave it to them, really. But at the same time, Ehome has also been very patient waiting for that kill to happen. HYM sitting in the tree for such a long time. Level 5 and a half now. I mean, it's easy to talk when we see the whole map, but uh, usually that plays... Shot into the Jakiro. Yeah, you can't get the spell. Uh, you can't really... Okay, Batrider's gonna oh, right lasso. lasso. There's a roll in, maybe a stun. Oh, nice stun onto the SF, making sure he can't just raise down the clockwork. That was a heads-up play from HYM here. Batrider's still gonna give chase to the clockwork. Very low. And there it is, the defensive play from the Oracle. Gonna keep Faith Beyond alive for nice now. Nice stun again. Nice stun again. yet again. Entomage comes in though, gonna try and finish up the clockwork, but there's the false promise. Still with the punch from the Tusk and even the roll through. Faith Beyond still gonna stay alive though. And that was just a huge play from HYM on the Oracle on Y. Y on the Oracle rather. And they're going to fountain up together and potentially smoke up together afterwards. Do they have a smoke with them? They do on the Oracle. Yeah, they're going to smoke up together after this. Phantom Lancer needs 100 gold for a Diffuse Blade. A bit unfortunate timing then. But it looks like maybe they just want to do some... Wait, they Dyer's smoke middle after tower all. is under right, attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. All top lane. Peter Payne jumps onto the Bad Rider together with the Fortune's End. And, yeah. That's an easy kill. Oh, such I really like this cute play, you know? Your fortunes and your teammate, and then they just blink in, or hook shot in, or roll in. Yeah, if, if you check the items uh, on Clockwork, uh, like he's level 9. Uh, was not part of many kills. Okay, oh, that's, that's a good hookshot. Hook shot onto the SF. Oh, and is he gonna fall? No, if anything, it's a Clockwork to fall. Queen of Pain also dropping very low. Has to blink out of there now. Uh, now, Super does fall to the Phantom Lancer. Phantom Lancer wants even more out of this. Antimage in the back line, trying to fight HYM. But with the Magnetize and the Phantom Rush now chasing, Monet might just fall here with the Urn Charge on top of him. Is he going to survive this? He's good. He's good. No Shrine, though, available for him. The question is, can they still keep chasing him? No, they can't. He's going to survive there. One for one trade set up by Faith Beyond. Feels like either side wanted more out of that. I don't know what Chicken was doing. Uh, Phantom Lancer had the gold for Diffusal Blade for almost a minute. If they had it there, they could have killed AM. Yeah. AM, they would have killed SF sooner as well. Probably. I don't know. Would have been a much better engagement for sure for uh, for Ehome. Radiance top tower is under attack. Well. Good couple of minutes here for Ehome, really. Getting some crucial kills that they need for Radiant's sure. Top tower is under attack. But the question is, is this enough against an anti mage They haven't. They have yet to take a tower, so they can't really c take control over the enemy jungle, which is something you really want to do against an anti mage, right? Take the T ones to make sure you get access to the radiant jungle. Yeah, uh, but anti mage uh, just finished the battle fury. Yeah, so it almost doesn't matter anymore since he's just forming your jungle instead. Yeah. Well, when you feel threatened. And when you kill tier 1 towers, you just uh, rotate the enemy jungle. Oh, smoke up. Tusk might almost dispel it. He's very close. They do see him, of course, with that one ward here. But this is not the target they want. They want the anti-mage. Anti-mage actually getting rooted up by the ancients. They do. The smoke does get dispelled. But that's a very naive just walking up the hill play. 
They do not have an ambition, but if you want to go for a smoke like that, you know he's farming the ancients. You should just try to go around. No. Well, and it's off. Or at the least, make sure you wait for until you have rocket vision or something. Well, if if you use a rocket, uh, it's a bit obvious. Yeah. Right? Shadowfiend has a BKB now. That's uh, a really big item on him. Uh, everything they have pretty much is magical damage is besides, besides uh, Queen of Pain ulti. And some right clicks from Phantom Lancer, but he clears those illusions pretty quickly. He is level 6, but he's been level 6 for a while now, h by I think he was before level uh, before minute 18. Yeah, he's gonna buy a second tome before uh, he uses his ulti. Something's not right. Something's not right. Smoke from LFY. They definitely want to make things right now. Pinging out. No, that was actually ping from Ehome. The question is, who are LFY going to find? Nobody really close by. That one ward does find the Phantom Lancer, though. So, link in with the lasso. They can definitely burst it down with the double raises, of course, and the macro pie on top. Radiant's so. middle tower it's an easy kill, really. Attack. Yeah, that's uh, not much committed, and that's a tower for them as well. No. I'm, I'm just looking at this clockwork, uh, thinking about Dyer's position 3 slash 4 attack. clockwork. This is why I prefer position attack. 4. Yeah. It doesn't really feel like he's doing anything that the position 4 couldn't have done, right? Yeah. TP in now from the clockwork. Maybe this is the kind of play they can do as a position the clockwork. Nice stun onto the end of BKB onto the SF, make sure that well, nobody can really run into there. Clockwork now being kept alive by the Oracle. Might have to use a false promise. There it is. He might still fall. Queen of Pain drops the ultimate. They only kill the Tusk with it, though. And now Queen of Pain has to be very careful with that aggressive blink. Bad are going to slow her down. Ice Path Ice again. Ice Path on top of it. Clock stuck in there with ESF and the Ender Mage. They can't kill Super. And they lose two cores for support. Yeah, the thing is, they killed Phantom Lancer before the fight started, which is the weapon, how to get back into the game. Uh, that's their highest uh, highest damage in these fights. And I'm really uh, surprised that they even tried to take their fight without the Phantom Hunter being there. Like, they, he's a major source of their damage. Maybe they felt overconfident because, you know, Bad Rider Lasso was used already, but obviously they have to know that, you know, there's a lot more for, for LFY to use in, Dyer's in those bottom tower is under attack. What have we here? What have we here, indeed? Blink on the Phantom Lands, you know. Well, it does help him evade those gangs and potentially even get into the team fights as well. Dyer's bottom tower has been denied. I, I don't know. I feel like Blink Dagger is uh, more of an item when uh, you're playing from ahead than when you're playing from behind. Like You can't afford to have a Blink Dagger right now. True. Definitely just like delays the heart as well. Who are you, who are you gonna blink on with, with a blink dagger? Uh, Supports maybe in the back like line? Ja Jakiro, Tusk uses uh, a snowball. snowball, you're in a bad position. Jakiro can use an ice pad, has a four staff as well. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a very good point. Queen of Pain has the orchid ready. Working towards the Lincoln Sphere. Another smoke from LFY now. They really want to make sure they get a... I mean, they can transition pretty much any kill into a tower push, right? Boom, there so why not just kill somebody? Well, the timing on the Anti-Mage's uh, Manta style is gonna be a minute later than, than the Orchid on Queen of Pain. Uh, so that Orchid's not gonna do too much. Yeah. I'm not gonna find anyone with this smoke. Ehome are uh, aware that the smoke is happening. They even scanned for it around the Roshan pit, but couldn't find anything. Just staying together because they know the smoke is happening. Blink from, uh, pings coming out from the Bad Rider. Gets clipped by the screen. They really want to take this tower. This would be their first tower to take for Ehome. But they're not going to fully commit to this. Or are they? Gonna fall back? Where are they? They can't decide. I'm not sure they can take the fight. They, they're drawing on the minimap. Uh, 
They they have a smoke on Earth Shaker. Over they don't want to use it. Yeah. Hook shot maybe from Clockwork. I mean he's waiting for it. He's playing around with the idea. Oh, they find the ESF, the stun on top of it, but he has a BKB. They really need to lock him down in time, but they can't. He's stuck in the cog, or is he really? He's not. False promise onto the bad right now, uh, onto the Phantom Lancer now. Last one on top, so he's really, really getting low. Uh, SF getting clipped by the pop ultimate. They do kill the toss in the back line. Anti Mage clears the Oracle. That's the that's the power of the Anti Mage, really killing those supports very early on. Faith Beyond now very low as well. Dual breath on top of him should probably fall here. Getting very low, and indeed he does. Queen of Pain ooh, just gets out. Yeah, this this is the blink dagger on uh, on Phantom Lancer. Like he gets in a bad position, tries to go for a Shadow Fiend, who's super tanky. Has uh, has a BKB, nothing he can do about it. I think the moment they see the BKB, they just need to disengage. They were in a good position to just disengage. They, they have nothing that goes uh, through a BKB besides uh, Queen, Queen of Pain, Pain ulti. Like Phantom Lancer is so squishy with uh, with no HP items. Yeah. Definitely feels very underwhelming at the moment. That's why. Yeah, I, I think they should have just disengaged after the BKB. Well. They didn't, and LFY is just further and further ahead. If we look at the experience graph, almost 10k in terms of experience, almost 10k in terms of net worth. LFY, only two outer towers to take for them, and in such a good position. We mentioned during the draft, God, it it's kind of a decent, at the very least decent, game for anti-mage, but now it feels like such a good anti-mage game now, because Ehome is so far behind. And it doesn't really feel like they can't bring him down. Like he's very elusive, and as long as he's not not out of position, it's really difficult to focus him in a team fight. Yeah, you know, once he gets to what, level level twenty, blink uncontrollable illusion, he can start split pushing with it a lot, and it also deals huge amount of damage in in these fights. The problem for Ehome is that. Uh, they're so far behind and you're playing against Antimage and you always have a feeling that you need to do something sure. uh, and if you can't find any openings it's just uh, like a moral victory for LF LFY. That's a really good point. All mid lane roll. The stun is not going to connect. They really wanted the Chikiro. I wonder why they initiate with the, with the Whisper instead of the Clockwork. Either way, e home. they really can't find anything. They're going to smoke again. Like you said, they, f they, f they feel a pressure. And I feel a pressure for them as well. Might find the bad right here. That could be a good kill for them. But unfortunately, they don't go on to him. Oh, it's dead. They find the toss. I guess it that's a consolation prize. It doesn't matter. Meanwhile, Antimage uh, sees them, farms uh, a full basher. You actually can You can see, I think it was a bad right drawing out. Like, somebody sh needs to be up top. Like, why is nobody farming top? Like, both SF and Antimage are here. I guess they're gonna go for the smoke gank, but who do they? They can smoke, smoke into Roche Pit if they want. Well, aside from presence of the Dark Lord, they don't really have a lot against Roche. And yeah, they're gonna they're looking look, look, look for a kill here. I th I I think this is better than just going straight up for Roche. But they're not gonna find it. Is Ehom also gonna smoke again? They don't have a smoke. I don't think. They do have one. In Incoming. I mean, their heroes uh, don't scale that well into the late game. Um, E-Homes, right? E-Homes, yeah. Uh, yeah, you have a Phantom Lancer, but uh, he's uh, really underfarmed. Yes. And the item choice is, uh, is not that good. The only hero who's super farmed is uh, CTY on that Queen of Pain, level 20 already. Uh, double damage, getting close to uh, Lincoln's here, which will help him a lot against Anti-Mage Ulti and uh, Beth Rider. Yeah, but... It is just a Queen of Pain in this game. I mean, if this was an SF, right? If the if the roles were sort of reversed in that regard, if this was an SF, yeah. you would feel much better about yourself. But because it's a Queen of Pain, they feel like they need to do something with this Queen of Pain's farm, of course. But they can't really do Radiant's anything. Like, SF is, is super tanky attack. with the BKB. And of course, again, anti are very elusive. They couldn't even get the Bad Rider early on. I feel like Ehome, even if they go for smoke ganks, who do they really find? I don't think they can kill Shadowfin because nothing goes through a BKB. Anti Mage really hard to take down even if they find him. Oh. 
The supports, of course, yeah, they can just kill the supports, but that's not what you want to waste your Africa on. You want more, ideally. Smoke gank mid. SF getting scouted out by this ward. The hookshot does connect. They immediately burst him down. All right. If you don't let him use his BKB, he is quite easy to kill. Oh. Queen of Pain blinks very aggressively with his DD. Wants the more. They find the Bat Rider in, in the tree line as well. Bat Rider is soon to fall. The defensive yield is going to keep him alive for another Cox just to push him away. That's a kill. In the meantime, though, Phantom Lancer dies to the anti mage. That's not good at all. I mean, it, it's still good for, for E Home, at least. Uh, they're ge getting something. Uh, they're going to have a hard time dealing with the anti mage. Uh, but it's still better than nothing. That was a good couple of kills for them. Killing the bad runner on top of it as well. Also, a much needed experience really for the rest of the team. Suddenly, HYM is level 12, right? Um, they definitely need more experience on their heroes. As you pointed out, only the Queen of Pain really high level, level 21. W what do you go for here if you're Queen of Pain? Do you go for the Fear or Spell Block? Hmm. 25. I mean, she already has a Lincoln Spear, so like double, double Lincolns. Uh, I don't think it's needed that Fear's much. Fear is pretty good here, isn't it? Yeah, it's additional sort of like disable. Okay, this is an interesting choice. She's gonna go for Nullifier. That's uh, against BKB. So yeah, it's, it's one of the best late game items because of the. You can just cancel the BKBs, Ghost Scepters, whatever. Oh. Like on a Bat Rider as well, he can't use uh, four Staff Yield Scepter. Against the Mantle style as well. Yeah. So he can actually silence him with Queen of Pain. And uh, Anti Mage might need, uh, once he sees it, he might uh, change things around, go for Lincoln Sphere or Aghanim Scepter. He probably even has solo kill potential on the Anti Mage. That's a lot of damage. Oh, well, actually, he's 20 damage. Yeah, he's getting close to level 25 with the uh, spell shield on. It's gonna be impossible to solo kill him. Well, they do scout out the Roche. Can't do anything about it. Too late for the snatch. SF winds up the Requiem, but has to cancel it because nobody's close. CTY now is, is pretty close. Blinks out of there, so they want to disengage. Top lane, though, or top HYM is getting hunted down, and Ehom just a little bit too late to the party. He means just blinks in aggressively, stuns up the Phantom Lancer. Phantom Lancer uses Doppelganger, gets ultied up as well, has to be forced out out. Is there false promise? There it is. But the nice cogs. Actually, no, bad cogs. That's bad cogs. Bad, bad cogs. Please, no. Oh. Yeah, this is the falling apart for Ecom. Uh, really Anti Mage is. has Aegis. Uh, they will just go for uh, tier trees. Tier trees are opened on top as well. Well. We're still gonna clean up this tier 2 first, but yeah, why not we'll just go uphill? We still have the Aegis, of course. Abyssal, as well, was used earlier that was triggered for that. Uh, was cancelled by the Lincoln Sphere on the, yeah. on the C2Y Queen of Pain. C2Y doing what he has to. He realized there's nothing they can do about this one, uh, about this lane. And he just split pushes. I don't really think they should, they should take this fight right now. I mean, they might, but I don't think they should. Just accept that it's gone. I mean, they're gonna continue pushing. They want to use this Aegis. Where are they? Are they really gonna continue pushing? They might just fall back first for like a minute or two. I I mean, I see your point. They probably could have, but you know, well, they can play it safe. Yeah, uh, the safe play is definitely just to fall back. Maybe wait for another item. They have a four staff on the tusk soon. That could be huge because right now Cogs is actually a huge deal. Uh, they do have the force staff on the bad rider, of course. Actually, they also have. Oh, that would be the third force staff. So, cool. still, it's not bad to just play it safe, fall back a little bit, push up the other waves because that could have been a free. T Actually, that was a free T2 bottom. So, CTY effectively pushing two towers. Yeah, Queen of Pain just finished that uh, nullifier. Uh, they can't focus the anti mage because he has. Uh, Aegis still, but uh, they can focus uh, Shadowfind or even Bat Rider. Yep, that'd definitely be good just to be able to kill one of those nuisances. Phantom Lancer has the heart, but it still feels very underwhelming in terms of both net worth and just items. Oh. Damage. 
Well, that was an oracle. That was an oracle, apparently. Didn't even realize. Batrider even has a gem, so they're gonna deny deny the vision. Well, th these are good wards. You don't yeah, expect to be some, there. We're gonna find the last one to the first bird that needs to be dead. They thought they could set a trap for the uh, for the Batrider, but instead he just killed the Earth Spirit. And that's the last tier two to be taken for LFY. And with that, they could probably go high ground. They still have the Aegis Earth Spirit dead for 40 seconds. Why not just go high ground? CTY trying his best to just play push. Radiance top tower has fallen. He's doing really the best he can with what he's given. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, this is gonna be the last fight probably. Yeah. Uh, how can they position Radiance themselves? How do they take this attack. fight? Twenty seconds for the Earth Spirit. They kinda have to wait for it, don't they? Can't really just go in without him, but at the same time, Rax are now exposed here. Anti Mage up front, still with the Eagles, of course. Ice Path on top of the Phantom Lancer. Phantom Lancer has to be careful. False Promise keeps him alive for now, but of course, with the Wolves Punch now on top of it, he does get the blink off, but is he going to be safe here with the Illusions chasing him? Yeah, alright, enough HP, but Rax is falling. Bad Riddle Lasso, now on top of the Oracle. Oracle to fall, Sonic Wave to clip three, four heroes, but it's not going to be enough, really. Now the Earth Spirit is stunned, uh, stuck rather, hookshot, not connecting with the battery, he does get the kill, Requiem used to kill the Phantom Lancer, this is game, Faith Beyond to die as well, CTY the sole survivor, but that's not really going to do anything, Nullifier did jack shit just because they were already losing yeah. the game anyway. I don't know, I would call it uh, an outdraft, uh, plus Shadowfin got that first uh, well, out draft, first, but also just out play. It, it started, yeah. Well, it started with the first blood, uh, Shadowfin getting it. Uh, so extra, extra souls, CTY typed well played for their own teammates. He knew he's gonna have a hard time oh. against that. Um, after that, I mean, it's an anti mage. You always feel a pressure to that you need to do something. Uh, not with these heroes. I think Clockwork should be more active when you're playing it as three. Like you, you, you're not denying the farm. For he was farming so much. Mage. He was farming so much and didn't really do anything. Um, his first hookshot rotation took definitely quite some time. And in general, just felt like Ehom just played always from behind in this entire game. Um, yeah. Al also, there, also Earth um, Spirit uh, being level four, you know, fifteen minutes. I mean, in. we've been harping on it, but he's been the s like he's been the core of aspect of this team still. Like he definitely enabled a lot of those kills early on. Without him, they don't but get yeah, half but of the, the kills. Yeah, the problem is that he was dying before True. they were getting the kill, True. so no XP for him. Yeah. Well, this uh, pretty much wraps up day two of the Chinese coverage for ESL One Katowice qualifiers. We saw LGD absolutely not destroy IG, but you know, very handily take down IG. IG didn't really put up a fight. Um, and now we saw Ehom getting obliterated by LFY. I expected this to be more of a close series. Yeah. To be fair, LFY is probably is definitely the favorite yeah, in this qualifier, are. right? They're like a top Chinese team. Yeah. Top two, top three. Well, probably top three more so than top two. But uh, yeah, Ehom still not really impressive at all. We've been waiting for a while now for this, the squad to sort of feel like more. But at the moment, they're still rather weak. So maybe going forward... Maybe they need more time. There's a lot of qualifiers, so I guess they can show show their strength. Uh, There's also technically still a roster swap available. Yeah. Again, the Chinese region is in turmoil. The Chinese New Year is coming up. A lot of after that, after they're that, gonna swap we'll, the players. Yeah, yeah, after that, we'll see probably a lot of or a couple of new rosters at least. Certainly for the teams that are sort of like you know tier two, tier three. LFY look in good shape. I don't think they need to make a roster change, but who knows? Maybe they need a player that is also worthy of an award. So yeah. So <laughs> During the Perfect World ceremony, for those who don't know, er everyone in LFY got the got player the award. Of the year award. Yeah, besides Super. Yeah. Everybody's like, oh, s support of the year, offlane of the year, carry of the year, uh, mid lane. Mm. Nah. Yeah. Well, that was it for us today. We're finally free. We can just go to bed now. Finally, after a very long day, we also yeah, cast some NA. This was a very, very long day for us. It was uh, a very, very long day for us. Uh, my name is Skim. This is Lacoste. Follow us on Dota. Skim Gaming, Lacoste Dota. You Follow us on it. Dota. Yeah, you need some sleep. <laughs> I need some sleep. I need some sleep for sure. Well, this was just day two. But of course, the ESL1 Katowice qualifier coverage is not over just yet. Head on to ESL1. 
underscore joined with a blue, I think, for uh, CIS, I think. And then on joined with a red, we're going to have Europe. So yeah. stay tuned. There's going to be a couple of hours before those games start, though. So actually, CIS starts in an hour, I think. So stay tuned. Just, you know, head on to joindota.com just to see where all the matches are hap uh, taking place. And, well, see you guys tomorrow, really, with more NA Dota and then also Chinese Dota.